Welcome to this fourth video in the Solid Edge Advanced Pack. Um, in this video we're just going to have a very quick look at rendering and what rendering can do and what it can do for us. Um, so you might remember in a couple of videos recently we've looked at animations um, which basically says uh, we'll look at how motion works if there's if there's gears working or whatever you know we'll, we'll see how they influence each other. We've looked at simulations um, which basically says if you've got temperatures or we've got forces we you know we're applying external factors to something how does it manipulate our part or our shape um, or our assembly and in the intermediate pack we had a very quick look at exploding um, which basically says we'll take apart our um, our assembly and it'll make it a lot easier to see how things go together in this video we're going to look at another installation of, of representing our, uh, our um, assembly and that's called rendering and basically what rendering can do is it says right we'll take this image this um this image that we've got here um and we can we can make it look photorealistic we can put it in an environment that says this is what it will look like um when you know when when in, when in the real life so it, it it's kind of like um if you ever imagine a concept photo more often than not they'll be rendered as opposed to actually they've made the product and put it out on the streets or in the and if you, if, you, if you imagine like a car, they normally render it first and then that's what they use for their kind of uh, promotional idea. They don't actually obviously make the part because part, that's that costs a lot of money to, to make something that might not work. So we're just going to be having a very quick look at rendering and what it can do. So um, it's very important to realise that uh, rendering is normally the one, one of the final stages in your uh, part or, or your um, design process. Um, because as uh, you know, obviously, once you've rendered something, it's become an image, and that's what you're going to present to people. You can obviously do it in interval stages to say, right, this is how it's developing, and it's quite a nice ra graphical representation um, of the development of a product. But you tend to use it as a final summary before prototyping to say, this is what we've got. Um, so what we've got, I've, I've just made this very uh, this, this this simple assembly here. Um, and this this has been made quite easily just with them um, some surfaces and some surf sketching and 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 for all those people out there that that are studying um uh, aeronautical engineering or know quite a bit about aerodynamics they'll probably say oh this doesn't this doesn't work but I, I just got a bit carried away and I thought I might as well use this for my rendering process um so this is the this is the part or the the assembly that we're going to make and obviously you can render anything you can render um anything from a table I think you might have seen in, in the very first in the basics pack that we looked at the table I actually rendered that and I showed people what it would look like when we rendered that um, I've also done a rendering of the uh, wine cooler sort of thing that we made in the second in, in the intermediate pack so I just thought I'd make something a little bit more advanced to render and I, you of course you don't have to make something um, that looks anything like this to render it can you can render any part or object or assembly under the sun so um, we'll dive right into the rendering process. So the way that you render something uh, in Solid Edge, and, and this is going to vary slightly for uh, SD7 to SD6, 5 and 4 users, but the, the general process is the same. So first of all we've got to export our render into an environment. So if you go along to Tools up here, okay, and you can obviously just jump into Keyshot up here, but, but just before you skip onto that, um, and we look at uh, if we if we look at the environment area and we look at the ERA section. We've already looked at that twice before. Um, we've looked at the E, which is exploding, um, which we looked at in the intermediate pack, um, where we exploded our object and we said, "This is all the constituents of the objects, and this is how it gets put together." And we've of course looked at animation, which we looked at uh, earlier on in the advanced pack, where we looked at motion and how um, different parts influence different things. Now the middle letter in this R is standing for rendering obviously so we're going to go into this environment and this is just another way of getting into the rendering environment obviously as I said you could use the key shot up there and um, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to click key shot render up here now for all of those people that are using ST4, 5 or 6 then it won't say key shot render it'll just say render and this is where we start to split off um, so I'll just do a very very quick overview for people that are doing ST4, 5 and 6 if it, once you press render up here um, the process is quite similar and the way it w all works is is kind of similar but everything is still done in the solid edge environment nothing gets exported to a new window so all of your materials and environments are up here and you just press render up here 
But for all of the people like me that are using ST7, we're going to have to um, we, we we use Keyshot Render, which is an uh, which is a separate application which um, Solid Edge exports the, uh, the the file to. So I've already got Render open, so it'll just load up what I've got. It might take a few seconds to load for you. And, I've, and I'll explain why I've why I've, I've already got one open already in a sec. Um, uh, because because quite 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 literally um the way the way that the rendering software works is uh, any frame that you do so any new position that you make or any zoom that you make or any new orientation so this would be like a new orientation if I rotate this round um it will do a dynamic render so it will start from scratch and it will render it from scratch it won't it doesn't render the entire object to like pristine you know like to to to, to pristine, pristine quality. Um, so that you can rotate it freely, because obviously that would take way too much memory. Um, so the way the way that rendering works is it it doesn't really care about material properties. It doesn't really care about motion. It doesn't really care about the simulations. It just cares about what things look like. Okay. So you just define everything based on its material properties, or, or rather its its material. Um, aesthetic characteristics. So as you can see uh, there was a big drastic change from the solid edge file which was um, uh, you know looked um, aesthetically pleasing you've got a bit of you've got shadow down here you've got a bit of gloss up here but it's all one color it doesn't look photorealistic um, and then we open it in the key shot environment and obviously it will, it will look just gray when you first open it up I've just added this these colors to show you that you, you can do a quite a diverse range of colors um, but you can obviously render um, individual parts differently into different colors so that you can you can develop contrast and you can make things look pleasing because obviously if you've got something like a car it's not all one it's not all one color you've got the body panels that say blue but then all your springs and your bolts and your um, your chassis is all made of steel or, or titanium if it's an expensive car or aluminium um, and and the glass is obviously glass and it's like dark tinted so you know you've got a huge range of different materials and and um, aesthetic materials, colors and and shades on on a on a on a on an assembly. So as I said, what I've done here is I've I've just added a couple of different colors to different sections, um, so that you can see that uh, obviously you don't have to just render it all one color. Um, so I'll just show you a couple of things. First, of all, I'm going to show you how to change a color. Then I'm going to show you how to change the environment. Um, and then I'll just show you some of the general properties. Obviously, with this having to be quite a short video, because obviously I could go on for rendering for, for hours and hours, much like surfacing and, and animations and stuff. And, but this is just to give you a very, very quick basis of what it can do and what it looks like. Okay. So I've already mentioned that everything, every change that you make results in a dynamic render. Um, if I rotate that round, it's being a little bit slow. But if, you, if I rotate that round, it will start rendering it again. Um, and it will start rendering it from scratch, and it will continuously render. So that basically means, as you can see, quite as you can see, um, what's actually happening in real time. The longer you leave it to render, the uh, more rendered, or, or or rather, the more photorealistic it will get, or the more aesthetically pleasing it will get. So um, you can see there's like just just above this wing tip here, or or like in the back of here, there's a bit of kind of um distortion that will eventually clear the longer you leave it, but with this being a short video obviously I'm not going to leave it for for a really long time so I'm just going to change a quick color um, so we'll just say that we want this this top panel here maybe maybe the, these top wing panels or something to be a new color so the way that I would recommend people do that um, and there are a number of ways to do it you can uh, uh, the first the first way we'll look at is just dragging and dropping so we'll, we'll take a material and we'll just drag that material onto it. So we'll just find a nice material that we like. Do something quite contrasting. Um, so we're just going to look at a type of plastic. These are all these are all defaults. So you'll see all these default values here, these default colors. Um, and we'll just change it to this like light blue, and just drag it, and quite literally just drop it on the surface. So when you drag and drop it, it changes colors that are similar to it that are connected to it. So as you can see it changed that entire panel that was white into this color. If I just rotate that a little bit round to the top, you'll see that it's changed all that panel that was originally white into this new blue color. If, however, I only wanted to change this section over here, okay, this is actually one panel here that's already been defined. 
um, and that's that's just to find when you export it into the file. It's, um, if we go here, that's just effectively this panel here. Um, that you can see here. I can change that panel individually by just dragging and dropping onto the section over here under scene. And you can do compound panels, so if I wanted to change that panel, and if I hold down control and I change that panel as well, so I've got two panels selected, I can change the colour of those as well, like so. So obviously now it looks a little bit silly, but that's that's th those are those are the two ways that you can change colours. You can either drag and drop it and it changes like colours that are connected to it, or it will change you can change individual or compound colours um based on based on uh, what you've got selected in your material properties. So that's just simply how you can change colours and, and obviously beforehand when, when this was all um nicely shaded in and stuff like that, um you you could see that that, that would take a little bit more time because you've got to go through almost every panel or every area and change the colours yourself. Okay. So the next thing that we can do is we can say, right, well I like this background, um, um, but I, I don't really like the colour scheme, I want a kind of like a more dramatic colour scheme or, or something like that. And that's all defined by the environments. So if you go up into the, if the next one along from in the library up here is environments, and these are all of your lighting environments. Um, so there's interior lighting environments that come with uh, backdrops, and there are outdoor lighting environments that come with their own backdrops, and then there's studio environments, which is what I've got open now. That just tends to do a general colour, white or black, or, or obviously grey, um, and it just changes the colour depending on uh, just the, the lighting environment that you've got selected. So the way you introduce a new lighting environment is you literally just select a, white, a lighting environment and just drag it and drop, and you'll see set environment has come up for saying it's going to change the environment. So now the entire background is white, um, a pretty you know a good distribution of uh, of lighting at the top. So therefore, there's quite a lot of these shadows that you can see as well. Okay, um, we could always obviously do an outdoor environment. So if we select, uh, I think this Iceland one will, will look quite good for this. Make it look like it's landed or something like that in in a desert somewhere. And obviously, with with the, with this color arrangement, it doesn't look. Uh, particularly realistic, but if you change the colours back to white or something, I'll just quickly do, just do that now. It will look a little bit more realistic there. So now it looks a little bit more like a shuttle that's landed somewhere, perhaps. Okay. So say if we just go back to maybe an original lighting environment, we could go back to perhaps. Uh, that's a particularly good one I like. So we've got this this kind of dynamic change here as well. But say we don't particularly like the um, the background. This is just a white background. It's quite dull. We want to add back that Iceland back, back background, but we want to keep the color the, the the shadows in the same way. We can just go up to the library here again, and just add a new background. So if we just add a background that we uh, the same sort of background as before, maybe this one will do. So I'll add that background, but I don't know if you can see it here, but the, the shadows have, have been kept the same way, and as has the lighting. So it looks quite a bit more realistic now. Obviously, as you let that, that render progress through time, um, as I said, it will get more and more aesthetically uh, accurate, more photorealistic. Um, I won't go into textures and favourites, but but that's just, you can say, oh, instead of just being um, a generic plasticky colour, I want to change these textures and stuff. Um, so that's that's basically what the library does. The library just says, right, I can. It, it consists of materials, um, lighting systems, and backgrounds, and of course textures. So so that's what you can that's what you can change in terms of the aesthetic look of your of your of your system. If you change project um, parameters, so we, we've looked at the library up here, then we've got the project parameters up here. You can say, okay, I want to select particular elements of my project. So if we find, um, this is actually all part of the design body, if we select something big that you'll be able to see from where you guys are. So you can select a really a, a large piece um, so that you guys can see it's, it's outlined by this orange outline here. Um, you can you can define parts of your of your um, the actual the project that you've got open, the actual uh, assembly sort of thing that we've that we've imported. Um, and as I say, you could you could select um, as you can see, I've selected this region down here, 
you can select this entire lighting system by dragging and dropping this way um, and then you could obviously change the color of that by dragging and dropping over there okay so that's what you can do in the in the scene environment that basically just says right this is the scene um this is the the part and then the material the material is also defined like this um, as you can see i've got 349 materials if i were to click that button it would show me all the materials that i've got present in this um design it will take quite a while to load up so i won't actually i probably should have done that before i loaded this up but but that that's what that's what that allows you to do um by going into the material area you can define uh you can redesign a, a material so if we click on uh hardwood and we were to drag that in, into a section you could change the material properties i think if i select a um a white face here and then you can do view all 49 materials again that will take a little bit of time but you can change what the materials look like so um the point of that obviously is if you've got something like um if you're if you've got this this green surface that you've used i've used this as one of the lights on the, on the inside you can say oh i want it to be a little bit shinier or i want it to be a little bit smoother or or i want it to have um uh, certain properties then you could obviously change um, how that looks so you can change stuff like the roughness um, the specular you can, you can change how much it reflects you can add textures so you can add um, you know uh, uh, you can make it look like a wood or, or, or you can make it look like carbon fiber and that just allows you to fine-tune the materials that you add uh, on, you know the paints or almost as it were uh, to your to your object then you can go ahead and, and define the environment so as I said uh, the environment that we're using is this lighting system. We've changed the background to this black light image using the background. So here, so you can change how the lights behave. Um, you can change what the background looks like. You can change the background image. You can ch adjust the brightness. Um, this kind of just allows you to fine tune the um, quite literally the environment that your that your part is in. The camera allows you to change. Um, so, well, okay, I'll do it this way. Um, um, obviously, as I said, if if you if you can select um, the turnable camera, which allows you to rotate your part around, um, the background will stay as as it is, obviously, because it's it's just, it's just a two D background, and you can move your part as well around this background as well, like so. So that allows you to change where your part is with respect to the camera, but you can obviously change quite a lot of things about the camera. So, like. You can change it from perspective to ortho, orthographic, which will kind of change some of the perfect perception as well. Um, as you can see, it's, to, it's attempted to do this this um, render as as we speak. I should change that, change that back because the that just depends on um, effectively the way that you look at it um, and how the three D how the three D environment is projected onto the two D screen that you're looking at, of course. Finally, and the one that I find the most important is is the is the actual settings, because um, I quite like to have quite clear images. As I said, of course, the longer you leave it, the more accurate the um, render will get, and the more photorealistic it will get. But obviously, um, the more the the higher the uh, quality of the image, the longer it'll take to render, especially if you've got quite a slow machine. Uh, my machine's not too bad, but at the minute it's struggling and it doesn't. It doesn't have the the greatest of um the the highest of settings uh, set up already. If you change if you increase the resolution, you can obviously export it as a higher resolution uh, image. You can you can change it to all these presets. You can change it to 1080p or I think that's uh, 2k or, or 4k down there. And then you can also change the rendering properties. So if we make the shadow quality quite a bit greater the shadows will look a lot more realistic but obviously it will take quite a lot more time to to render so this just allows you to have a very quick overview as you can see just a very quick overview of um what sort of thing you can do um to uh to render to make your to make this kind of generic and not very aesthetically pleasing um assembly um albeit relatively complex uh into a much more realistic uh, image and as I said, um, just leave this, just leave this image for a couple of minutes. I mean, I, I, I've, I've um, turned these all the way up, left it for about six hours, and come back, and it's still chomping away, but it's definitely making progress. Um, and it, it makes it look very good. It makes it look very photorealistic. But 
a lot of these things is depending on your computer processing power and how long how long you're willing for it, to wait for it to um to render so that's just a very quick overview of rendering i, ho I hope you found that quite interesting